large vining plants like these cucumbers, winter squash, and melons are perfectly happy sprawling out all over the ground. But by trellising them like this, I'm able to grow more in a smaller space and it reduces disease by increasing airflow around the plants. It also brings the flowers up to the pollinators more easily and it brings the plants up to me so I don't have to bend over to work on them. I'm Kyle from Urban Farmstead and in this video I'm going to show you how I built this livestock panel trellis and show you a couple of other options how to use this wire to build trellises for your garden. This is a livestock fence panel. You might have also heard it called a cattle panel or a hog wire panel. Those are accurate names because depending on the type of livestock that it's meant to keep in, the design is gonna be a little bit different. This is actually a sheep panel and this one is five feet tall whereas a lot of the other ones are only four feet tall. This one also has squares, four by four squares compared to the larger rectangular shapes in the wiring with some of the other ones. Now this is more expensive because there's more material with those squares, but I like the size and look of this. I've also used cattle panel and hot wire panel. I think they're all great. What I do always use are these livestock panels because there's other products that look similar and they work somewhat similar. There's like the remesh wire that goes in concrete, but those are pretty flimsy wire. I like how sturdy this is. It's also galvanized, so it's not gonna rust. So it makes a really nice shape, it stays straight, and you can grow anything on this. I mean, I've grown pumpkins that were 25, 35 pounds, and as long as the vine can support the weight of that fruit, a trellis out of this stuff can support it. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to make this trellis, because these are the trellises that I'm making for my garden. But this stuff is so versatile, and I've used it in so many different ways to make very simple and effective trellises. I wanna show you two other ways that you can make this into a trellis with very minimal time and materials. The first one is my favorite and it's an arch trellis. It's the very first trellis that I put in our original farmstead about six years ago and still my favorite. It's an arch trellis. Basically, I would drive in four T-posts. Right here, I've got two, but I'll show you how you can do it. I'd have one here, one here, and two more up here. Then, Take this wire, butt it up with one side of the T-post, bend it up, and pull it into the other T-post. Now, as I said, you'd have another T-post here and one here, so those would hold it together in the front. And then you just wire it to those posts. It's that simple, and you can grow so many different crops up and over these arch trellis. So there's one option to use these livestock panels. I'll show you the next. The next one is to just literally drive in these T-posts and wire this livestock panel to it. Now you can have one on either end with a few spread out down the middle, you can make them 16 feet long, whichever length works for you. And you can either have them start right at the base, or if you have a crop like tomatoes, that's gonna grow pretty tall, you can even wire them one foot up, 18 inches up. So a couple of different ways you can do it. In our garden this year, I'm making these trellises. I like having a border around the trellis. Not only does it have a nice finished look, but it keeps the center from getting kind of wobbly and flimsy depending on what you're growing. Now, in time, this is gonna be completely covered with crops. So seeing this border around here won't really matter, but I do think it helps with the structure a little bit. I also like to use redwood to frame these trellises. So if you're interested in this design, I'll add a link to that video in the description below. As I said, the height of these panels varies anywhere from three feet to five feet and possibly beyond that, but they all pretty much come in a 16 foot length. So you can either leave it full length if you've got long beds or cut it down to work for you. My beds are 10 feet long, so I'm just gonna cut this in half and make two eight foot panels out of it. Bolt cutters like these are my preferred tool for cutting these panels, but you can also use a hacksaw, a reciprocating saw, or a cutoff wheel. For the frame, I'm using three quarter inch conduit pipe. 
This is an eight foot long section with male threads at either end that'll go along the top. I also have a 10 foot section with male threads at either end, but I'm cutting this one in half so I have five foot posts at either end. And I'll connect those together with three quarter inch galvanized elbows with female threads. And I'll hold it all together with some wire. I'll cut this 10 foot conduit pipe in half to make two five foot sections for the side posts. Again, there's a few different options for how to make this cut, and if you only have one, a hacksaw is going to work perfectly fine, but if you have a reciprocating saw, that'll work even better. And if you have a cutoff wheel, that's my number one recommendation. Just be sure to wear eye protection when using these because they throw a lot of hot metal sparks. So I have my eight foot pipe on the top, my five foot pipes on the sides, and I'm joining them together with this three quarter inch galvanized elbow. And I'll just screw them all together hand tight. Next, I'll use metal wire to attach the livestock panel to its frame. You can also use zip ties, but I would only recommend them for a temporary trellis because over time those plastic ties are going to break down and eventually fail. The wiring can all be done with needle nose pliers like this, but if you have access to all the tools, I like to use vice grips to twist the wire, wire cutters to cut the wire, and channel locks to press it down. Next, I've got two four-foot pieces of rebar that I'll drive into the bed to anchor the trellis. All right, here's the true challenge. Let's see if I can slide this on here myself. Success. I normally like to get our trellises in these beds before I plant anything, but I had a lot of projects this year, so I was a little bit delayed. Either way, these cucumbers are gonna to go to the top of this trellis in no time. And I've got a couple more trellises to make still here, but this is it for this video. So if you have any questions about how I built this trellis or any other trellising questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this, hit subscribe. Happy gardening, everyone.